I'll introduce the, the next speaker is Jonathan Balkind from uh, Princeton. So um, his talk is um, Open Python and Arian, the first Linux booting open source RISC V mini core. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Jonathan, and uh, the one getting his microphone on now is Michael. Um, and we're going to be talking to you about Open Python Plus Ariane, which is the world's first Linux booting open source RISC V mini core processor. So who are we? I'm Jonathan Balkins. I'm the lead architect of OpenPython at Princeton University. Um, I'm part of the Princeton Parallel Research Group, um, and I'm uh, here representing the group. Uh, the group is led by my advisor, Professor David Wenslaff. Um, we have a number of PhD students in our group. Um, we have a postdoc. We're looking for more postdocs. Um, and every semester, we have some undergraduates who work on a variety of projects related to OpenPython and otherwise. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm representing the PALP team, who is led by Professor Benini here at ETH and University of Bologna in Italy. Um, we've been building open source hardware since 2013, and we're one of the leading groups that builds RISC-V cores, as you know. Um, within, this, within the scope of this project, I've been responsible for the Open Python and Arian integration from the PALP side, but also have been working on this with other people from our lab, for instance, uh, Florian Zaruba, who is the main architect of the Ariane core. Um, so on both sides of the pond, we've had uh, support from a number of sponsors, um, including um, Digital and Xilinx have donated as a number of FPGA boards, which we'll be showing you um, at our tutorial on Thursday. Um, so what is this project? Um, essentially, last year um, at the, I believe, the Barcelona RISC-V workshop, Florian was up on a stage like this and was talking about um, building Ariane and how they'd got it to the point of uh, booting Linux um, and were kind of enhancing stability and so on. Um, and on the to-do list items, we saw that they were looking for a way to make Ariane multi-core. And so we came together over the last kind of year or so um, to develop a permissively licensed Linux booting open source RISC-V mini-core. Um, this is based on kind of two very mature platforms. OpenPython has been around for a long time. Um, Ariane is capable of booting Linux single core. Um, and through working uh, together, we were able to get Linux booting on this many core platform in less than six months of work. Um, and in particular, between booting on one core, booting on two cores, booting on four cores plus, we didn't actually make any RTL changes to the core or the uncore um, to make that work. Um, so everything is very kind of stable and mature. Um, and the platform that we built is the world's first open source Linux booting RISC-V many core. Okay, as you all know by now, Ariana is the RISC-V core, the 64-bit RISC-V core from the Paul family. It's an application class processor written in System Verilog. It brings all the capabilities and infrastructure to boot the fully-fledged OS as Linux, for instance. Um, it implements all the privilege modes needed and virtual memory, uh, SV39 as specified with RISC-V spec. It has been optimized for performance, meaning that it runs about 1.5 gigahertz in a recent M22 nanometer technology. Uh, it's built around a six-stage pipeline at the moment with single in-order issue and in-order commit, but it does have some limited out-of-order capability, so the individual functional units can complete out-of-order, and they write their results uh, before being committed into a structure that we call a scoreboard that kind of tracks the instructions that are currently in flight. And this all has been designed for extensibility, so we just recently added, for instance, an FPU to this design here. And uh, Orione has a simple branch prediction mechanism in its instruction front end you know, to um, improve single thread performance. Let's have a quick peek um, into the architecture itself. This is a more detailed block diagram with where you can see the six pipeline stages. Um, the front end spans the first two pipeline stages because it also has some addressing, uh, virtual address translation here, and the branch prediction mechanism, which, we, which need like two pipeline stages uh, to meet the frequency target. Um, there is an instruction decode stage here with the compressed decoder, an issue stage, an execute stage, which takes like one cycle for simple ALU instructions, but it can take more for more complicated instructions like FPU, multiplier, memory operations. Then we have the scoreboard and the commit stage. And if you were wondering, this down here is the flush controller. Now, as Jonathan mentioned, our designs are um, quite mature. They have been taped out several times. So Ariane has already been taped out twice in a modern 22 nanometer process by Global Foundries. What you can see here um, is the Poseidon Cosmodrome. These are the latest two chips. Um, 
we have the chips back in the lab. We fully characterized them at different operating points. Uh, we also had a tape out with different standard cell flavors. And for instance, here you can see a couple of ballpark numbers uh, in this library flavor. It runs up to 1.3 gigahertz at this voltage and burns about 55 milliwatts at one gigahertz. So OpenPython um, is an open source many core platform. Um, we have focused a lot on scalability and configurability in designing OpenPython. And so in particular, you can scale the platform up to 500 million cores if you so choose. Um, and we try to have a lot of configurability both in the core and the uncore, specifically to make it easier for people to explore the design space and figure out what the right chip they want to build is or the right series of chips. Um, the OpenPython platform supports simulation in a variety of different kind of industry standard simulators, including some open source ones. Um, and something that's unique is that we actually provide an open source synthesis and backend flow, um, which you can kind of patch against the synopsis reference methodology. Um, we have verified this in ASIC and FPGA, um, and we actually have a power and energy characterization that's extremely thorough, and all of the data for that is available on openpython.org, which you can download today. Um, and we have kind of chips and FPGA implementations in the lab, which run full stack Debian Linux. So if you want to build an OpenPython or OpenPython plus Ariane system, you start out with a single core, a single tile. This is a tile-based many core. Um, you can have a couple of tiles. You can have 16 tiles. You, know, you can build yourself a big chip. Um, and then our cache coherence system, which we call PMesh, extends off-chip and across chips. And so you can use these off-chip routers to connect multiple chips together. And then you can use the chipset crossbars to connect to DRAM, kind of open um, standard I.O., like Axie or Wishbone, or you can kind of hook up different accelerators as well, um, if that's something you want in your system. Um, an open Python tile um, looks a bit like this. So we started out with a modified OpenSpark T1 core um, and the FPU that came with that. But the important uh, part here is the PMesh cache system. So the L1.5 cache you see here, this is kind of like a private L2 cache in many kind of standard many cores today. Um, and we have a slice of the L2 uh, or, and directory cache um, in each tile. And this is an LLC. And you know, between those two caches and their network routers, that's kind of what we define and call PMesh. And so uh, PMesh has also been, uh, Python has also been taped out. Um, we have a 25 core chip. Um, we have this up and running in our lab. Um, and it was taped out in IBM's 32 nanometer process. And so it has about 460 million transistors. So this puts it kind of well in the class of the largest academic chips that have ever been built. Um, and we targeted about a gigahertz and clock frequency. And we can you know, run Debian on this chip in the lab um, and connect a variety of different peripherals and open IP. OK, so what you can see here is basically a rehash of the block diagram that we just saw before. So on this side, you have one tile. There's another tile here, another tile here. Here are the peripherals in the chipset. Here you have this PMesh block with the L1.5 um, private cache and the L2 shard and the NOC routers. And we basically found when, you know, during the process of plugging this stuff together, uh, that the native L1.5 interface is the optimal place to actually plug Ariane into the system. In order to do so, we developed a new um, L1 cache system for Ariane from scratch because we had to support additional protocol features like uh, invalidation messages coming in from the L1.5 side here. But we also do um, support all RISC-V atomic operations, which are basically routed through the L1 cache to the L1.5 or L2, depending on what operation it is. For instance, the, LR, uh, the load reserve store conditional operations are directly handled in L1.5 cache, and the other operations which follow this fetch and op pattern, like an atomic addition, for instance, they are directly resolved in the corresponding L2 shard here. <clears throat> but apart from the core, we also made some um, additions in the chipset. For instance, we added a couple of RISC-V specific peripherals like the CLIND and PLIC interrupt controllers. These are needed, for instance, if you want to have timer interrupts or external interrupts. We also do have um, a debug transport module that is uh, compliant with the latest RISC-V spec draft for external debug. So you can attach a JTAG and uh, use a GDB debugger, for instance, to load and debug and single step programs. And last, we have a boot ROM here, which basically contains a very simple zero stage bootloader and a fully automatically generated device tree, um, which captures the configuration of that platform and allows the software, for instance, an OS, to automatically adapt to the configuration that you chose to build here. 
So speaking of configuration, this is a really important part of OpenPython as we designed it, and we're really glad oh that as we've moved on to use Ariane instead of the OpenSpark core, um, that we're still able to have a number of configurability options. So in particular, the floating point unit um, can vary in the precision. You can change the number of entries in the TLB. There are other parameters, store buffer, and so on um, in the system that you can configure. Um, you can change kind of sets and ways in all of our caches. You can um, change the interconnection topology on your chip. 2D mesh, crossbar, and then we have multiple other topologies for kind of interchip communication. Um, another important part here, coming back to what Michael mentioned about Risk V debug, is this is one of the bootloading methods that we have. So if you want to kind of load in a program, load in a Linux kernel, something like that, you can do that, and then step through with GDB. Um, we can also use UART for uh, copying tests into memory and executing those, so you can run bare metal. Um, but then we also have, if you want to boot the full operating system, you can use SD or SDHC card for that. You'll use those in particular on FPGA prototyping uh, boards. So our favorite board of use is the Digital and Genesis 2. We have one of these here. Um, and we'll be showing those off on Thursday. And we like this because it's a relatively reasonable price. And you can fit one or two cores on that board at running at about 66 megahertz. Um, but we also support a number of other Xilinx boards. And so if you have a VC707 evaluation board, um, you can fit several cores on that. Um, we can go down onto the Nexus video. Um, for quite a low price. Um, and if you want to scale up on the other end, you can get kind of something like 16 cores on uh, VCU118 or next pp 3 r one of these kind of Xilinx VU9P parts. Um, we're also in the process of working on bringing up Linux on Amazon F1 um, so that people will be able to kind of rent time on OpenPython plus Ariane in the cloud and do development in that environment as well. If you want to try this your own, you can do that now. You can go to this link. We'll take you to the, our GitHub repository. Uh, but we do also have some pre-built bit files that you can download on openpeton.org together with a Linux image, um, where you can, for instance, you know, download the bitstream for that guy. You can boot SMP Linux with two cores, play Tetris, browse the web with a console browser if you wish to do so. But we're not done yet. We still have a couple of items to check on our bucket list. Um, for instance, if we'd like to move to more mature boot processes such that we also can boot the full Linux distro. Um, we're currently working on some extensions to the simulation environment, for instance, random instruction uh, generators like RISC-V torture, litmus tests to test the memory subsystem more thoroughly. And we are planning to do some performance enhancements like uh, multi-level TLBs in Ariane um, and work on the memory interface. We actually have a Google Summer of Code student working towards multiple issue um, and a multiple issue architecture. And there are a couple of things that you would like to do with reparameterization of the caches because there are some parameterization options in there which are still sort of legacy permutations coming from the open spark world and would like to you know beef that up a little bit and of course we have planned tape outs on both sides so stay tuned for those of you that would like to get your hands dirty there's good news we've got a hands-up workshop at wash this week on thursday if you're interested there's plenty of space join us it's free there are workstations, so no need to bring your laptop. We also have plenty of FPGA wars available there. If you cannot make it, there will be a similar workshop in two weeks from now at ISCA, plus a talk at Collocated Carve uh, with an associated paper with many more details about the things that we just talked about right now. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, guys.